Okay, moving on now, we're going to look at a couple of variations of the front kick. Just broadly speaking, the karate style with snap weight on the back foot and more the Thai style of throwing when I'm transferring the weight forward into the kicking leg. The karate style kick, I'm square on with my opponent, my front foot turns out 45 degree angle. I don't want to kick square on with my hips, I'm going to push myself over rather than drive through my opponent. I've got nothing to push through there. I need to be able to open my hips up. My knee stays on line, don't allow the knee to turn in as I'm driving the hips through. The whole point of me twisting here is to project this knee further forwards. Okay. I'm pointing my foot, I'm pulling the toes back, I'm kicking with the ball of the foot. The reason I kick with the ball of the foot in either variation of the kick is because it adds distance to the kick. If I kick with the flat of the foot with the heel, my hamstrings are going to tighten up, they're a lot shorter when I've got my toes pulled back this way and I'm going to lack penetration on the kick. The karate style kick is performed with snap and I'm striking on the upward phase of the motion. I'm either using it sort of groin lower stomach level, pubic bone area really, for a street style situation, if you actually get kicking distance, it's rare that that actually happens. But I have seen it used effectively on occasion. For the tournament end of things, we're looking more solar plex or again into the floating ribs. The knee comes up, I strike on the upward phase of the motion and a pull back, kicking up into the target and pulling off. Keeping my weight on the back foot the whole time. Again, like with the karate style round kick, I want a nice sharp pull off. If I'm throwing more the Thai style, it's the more powerful version of the kick. I personally still prefer to use the ball of the foot like I say. I have seen some people do this with the flat of the foot, but it won't give you as much penetration on the kick. Again, the front foot turns forwards on the 45 degree angle, but instead of coming up and hitting on the upward phase of the motion, the motion's more like pedalling a bicycle. I bring my knee up and I push through here. So it's a pushing front kick. Okay. So again, I can use this into the body, I can use this into the knee, or I can use this push kick to check into the hip flexors if the person tries to throw a rear kick, okay? So I really want to get the hips through ballistically, the shoulders back to get my momentum driving forwards and through the target. It's very important that after I drive through and travel and, and put my weight through into this kicking leg, that I do bend it, otherwise I'm just going to fall straight forwards. If I keep my legs straight, shh, I'm going to fall forwards, and if I've missed and mistimed, boom, I'm going to be moving on to my opponent's technique. So there are other options, but the basic option is, after you've driven through, shh, pull back. Knee up, drive through the target, shh, and bend the knee. So I don't fall forwards. Thank you. Okay, so we're just going to look now at the two basic variations of the front kick on the pad. If I'm throwing the karate style version, my partner holding the pad wants to angle the pad down. Remember, I'm striking on the upward phase of the motion. I'm driving up into the pad. If I'm going for the push kick, he's going to make sure he's got a really solid stance so I don't knock him over with the kick and he's going to hold the pad flat. This time it's more like the bicycle movement, the cycling, the knee comes up and pushes down and forwards and through into the pad. We'll just have a look at a couple of them at speed, so if we go with the karate one first. And now we'll look at the tie. 